you say that a good way to like set up a tour if you're going, you know, out somewhere and coming back would be to call venues in the area and ask if you can be that opener on like, things that they have going sure. on certain nights? Go go to go to venues websites. Um, and see if there's an opener. Just email them, hey, you know, we're so-and-so bad. Do you need an opener this day? And sometimes I might say, you know, send me a music, a bio, and I'll forward it to the headline. I don't make that decision. I'll just forward it to the headline band. And, I, you know, the easy, the one thing about uh, the, the Internet, it's just it's so easy to hit forward an email and take it out of my hands so I can do on other things. And not, you know, I just can't spend all day trying to find an opener for every band. So someone emails me first, they get it. You know, and uh, I, I, you know, so. Yeah, the other thing too is most bands know other bands, right. and uh, they all have varying levels of, of success or, you know, experience. So it's like also talk to other bands. I mean, I would say when I was in Paley, that this the thing that single handedly changed our world was going on tour with the Promise Run, you know, who we were friends with. Um, but it was like that changed everything for us. And I would say that goes then down to, it's not just because we were friends, they weren't doing us a favor necessarily, but you know, they knew we were serious about our music and that you know, we had been playing a good time. And you have to be, what you're doing has to be good. I mean, you have to fundamentally be working on your, your stuff. And if, if that's not good, you know, all of this talk is totally irrelevant. Kind of a going back to um, excuse me, what you said about bringing what you need. Um, how do you kind of deal with, I guess, the equipment issue, like bringing what you what you know you like want to bring along with? I mean, I know as a guitarist, sometimes I have this problem where it's like, well, you know, I've got like four guitars, I don't want to bring all of them because they all do different things. But you know, I only have room for like two of them. And I guess you know, it's like, well, I have this Marshall half stack, but I don't really need it for this gig, for these couple gigs, but maybe these do, these I do. You know, I guess how do you really get around? Really, just being, I guess, you know, um, well prepared for every show, and still bringing what you, what you at least want to bring in terms of equipment. You, you, you're just you're going to have to make sacrifices and, and narrow it down to the the absolute essential. And you know, again, what I learned from this this France experience was nothing is ever going to be ideal. You know, unless if I'm playing in, in, in my town or something where I'm driving around my my. Or our own vehicle that we know we have room for something. You, you're going to have to improvise, and um, you know if that means bringing absolutely nothing and borrowing everything, you just have to be prepared to make that work. And don't um, you know be prepared for that in terms of don't let the music suffer because of that stuff. Like don't you know figure out a way to do what you do and still have it come across on a level that you want it to be at without the, the, the quality sacrifice. But understand that you know hey. I can't have all these sounds, I can't have this range of sound that I know I can have with these four guitars, but what I can do with these two, I can make it work for all of this other stuff. It's just not going to be the same. But you know what? The audience doesn't know that. For, for, for the most part. Yeah. They don't know that. You know that. And so it's it's really a, something you have to come through. So, so I think it's important that you say it's improvised and not proper. Right. Totally. Yeah, but two guitars work. I just saw Eric Clapton at some place. He played one freaking guitar all night. If Eric Clapton could play one guitar, yeah. you know, why is like, the deal? You don't need to change. What's that? Through like a little Fender concert. Yeah, yeah. I mean, one, you get one, you know, I said, dude, this is the first show I've ever saw where a guy didn't like change guitars every three songs. But it's Eric freaking Clapton. I mean, it's all, it was, you know, if he could do it, you know, he probably's got one guitar and one spare. Well, Jeff Beck used to say because he, when he would tour with Steve Ray Vaughan, Steve Ray Vaughan would have like an entire universe of amps. And you know, five, six guitars, and Jeff Beck would have you know like two guitars and a little Princeton, and he could he would sit there and say, well, that's all I need because I can overpower that just as much easier than you can your entire wall of amps. And I don't have my roadies lugging around five thousand pounds worth of equipment. Yeah, I mean, without knowing knowing the guys, I mean, it's easy to look at that and say, well, that is just pure ego. I mean, it's because yeah. he could. He did it because he could, and that's the <laughs> only reason. It had nothing to do with. Then go back to Spinal Tap and watch the movie. Right. Everything we've been talking about this whole 45 minutes, you can see Spinal Tap. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I saw it. Yeah. just handed that up. <laughs> <laughs> Here you go. Thanks. <laughs> Thanks for coming. Don't do this. <laughs> I think I, I saw a stage plot for uh, Ingve Malmsteen, and he tours with 29 Marshall heads that he just sets up all across the front of the stage in two cabs, two 412s for each. 
But that's necessary. Yeah, it's like a semi truck that you got. Yeah. You know, yeah. yeah. the club was. Why not? Was there was twenty eight. Come on stage and go. There's twenty eight here. Yeah. Someone gets fired. And it was that one. Don't look at that one. It was from Spinal Tap. You know, don't even look at that one. Yeah. Don't. <laughs> <laughs> These guys are. <laughs> It's one louder. But also, I, you know, I, I go back to Troy. But Troy in a band is like four or five of you because you love the girlfriend at home. Each of you should have a job to do. You know, one should settle with the club. One should maybe settle merchandise with the club. One person should be in charge of making sure the clubs have posters and CDs. Um, driving. The one drive. One should be a main driver and make sure obviously one doesn't drink. If you're before, you know, if you're driving the, that night or even back to the hotel. You know, make sure one of you is sober enough to drive. But by splitting up the thing between promo, advancing with the club, that way each band member feels involved, um, and it takes from one guy <coughs> doing everything and, and things slipping through the cracks. John, did you big question? Did you guys do similar situations? Each each band member have its own kind of assignment. Yeah, it changes though. I mean, just based on you know people wanting to move around or do something different, uh, especially driving. You know, kind of shift. Driving, yeah. yeah. But otherwise, it was just kind of like, I mean, merch stuff, I mean, I, honestly, nobody ever wanted to deal with that just because it's 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 a money thing. Nobody wanted to be, like, doing business, you know, after you play. But you, know, it's, you have to do it. And again, it's an opportunity to talk to people. So we just kind of would switch off based on, you know, who, wanted, you know, who felt like doing 